as I record this, it is June the 25th, 2017. About not even half of the year is done, and I'm already starting to think about the possibilities of the match of the year for 2017. And ladies and gentlemen, that is what I'm here to do. I'm here to give you the top five, in my opinion, in my opinion, the top five so far matches in the WWE for 2017. And before I get into the actual top five, I want to give you guys my honorable mentions. So the first honorable mention I want to give you guys is WWE Elimination Chamber. The Elimination Chamber match for the WWE title. A tremendous match between arguably, you know, the, the the six best wrestlers in the WWE you had John Cena, Bray Wyatt, uh, The Miz, Ambrose, Baron Corbin. And there's one other person that I'm forgetting, obviously, which I always do. I can't pinpoint. Oh, AJ Styles. AJ Styles. Can't forget that guy. The Elimination Chamber was honestly a tremendous match. They came out with this brand new design, which a lot of people didn't really like or enjoy, um, in terms of the padding, which was on the uh, padding the steel grate. But when you think about it, if the padding was not there, uh, you know, they wouldn't have been able to perform a lot of the stunts they did and a lot of the interesting moves they did. Cer certainly it did take away from the action itself, but the Elimination Chamber, the design was very, very interesting. It was just the padding a little bit. Um, obviously, the winner of that match was Bray Wyatt, which was uh, a very, very interesting uh, outcome. Another honorable mention is uh, Styles versus Shane McMahon at WrestleMania. They pulled off one of the greatest matches uh, you know, of that night. Uh, they pulled off a tremendous show stealer. They did steal the show and they were on first. So that's a very, very good thing. Um, whether you're on first or last, you know, if you're on first, people will remember you. If you're on last, people will remember you. And uh, if you don't want to be last or if you're not last, you want to be first. And, uh, you know, they pulled off a match that a lot of people were, you know, wondering if they could. And uh, a lot of people weren't putting this as the match of the night. Uh, specifically because of who Styles is facing. It could have been a little bit of a lackluster, but it turned out to be great shooting star press. Uh, McMahon has it all, and this was uh, a great match to kick off WrestleMania. Um, the next honorable mention is Roman Reigns versus Braun Strowman, WWE Payback. I wanted to put this match on my top five, but there was just no space, uh, obviously, because I already had my top five listed. Um, but this came so close. If if I if this was a top six, this would possibly fit in. Um, but Roman Reigns and Strowman, tremendous story they told. Um, it was a one hell of a match. Strowman was destroying the crap out of Roman Reigns. Uh, at the end, we finally got to see Ro uh, Roman Reigns get his ribs broken, snapped. Strowman snapped, uh, and uh, nearly broke Roman Reigns in half with the steel steps onto his ribs. And then leading into the back, you had, uh, you know, Strowman rip off the damn uh, ambulance door. Tremendous sequence. And it was a very, very intriguing uh, bout between those guys. My last honorable mention, I know I know have a lot of honorable mentions because, you know, um, there's a lot of matches that I really wanted to cover over this top five list. But, uh, you know, unless if I wanted to make a top ten, but then I would have had to rewatch all these matches over and over to... Um, in depthly understand what happened, but my last honorable mention is recently what we've just seen. It's it's we're fresh off this match, the Money in the Bank men's ladder match. All right. In a ladder match, there's a lot of stories that are being told. You know, what I'm saying there's a lot of stories being told, and there was a few stories here and there. You had Baron Corbin who attacked Shinsuke Nakamura from the beginning. You had Nakamura and Styles. That was probably the greatest moment of that match. Uh, you know, Styles was amazing in that match. Uh, Sami Zayn uh, was tremendous. Nakamura had his shine. I mean, everybody was tremendously working together. And the outcome, obviously, Baron Corbin winning. Um, it was a probably the best match of that night. And uh, probably uh, that was a good Money in the Bank match. Right. Um, and from what we saw earlier or before that, you know, uh, with the women's match, Obviously, this did better than that match, um, no doubt. Now, let's get into the top five 
my top five list for the top five best WWE matches of 2017 so far. Number five goes to Roman Reigns versus Kevin Owens, WWE Royal Rumble 2017 in the Alamo Dome, San Antonio, Texas. It was between this match and Roman Reigns and Strowman. And the reason why I chose this match is because I distinctly remember watching it. Or watching what Owens did in that match was truly amazing. Um, Owens is, you know, and, na- and now he's starting to show more of himself. But he w- he's an underrated wrestler. He's underrated. Um, and before he wasn't being used to his full potential. And now he's being used a little bit more with his gimmick that he has. I tweeted this tweet on that night as well. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people got hate for this. But Roman Reigns and Owens. Yes, that was probably one of the best matches of that night. And I remember clearly the chair spot that Owens did. Uh, where he nearly fell through it. The, the, uh, where he put chairs on top of each other. right, uh, Lining it up, sort of. Um, and I remember him stating on a podcast that he would love to do that spot that he used to do all the time and he would love to do it in the WWE and then come Royal Rumble he does it and Roman Reigns pushes him through it or Superman punch or something and he falls through it and that was um, a lot of people cringed at that not because it was bad but because it was hard to watch uh, oh my god what, what about what about Kevin Owens uh, frog splashing Roman Reigns and nearly nearly cutting himself with the table I mean if you rewatch that the table he he he, he frog splashed uh, Roman Reigns uh, on one side of the table, right? He was more to the top than he was in the middle, and so he nearly got his face, uh, you know, uh, hit with the uh, the steel parts of the table that keep it up, right? The legs, and uh, that was that was dangerous. Also, don't forget that Chris Jericho, Chris Jericho was actually, um, you know, in the in the in the cage on top, uh, suspended, and this match was, uh, you know made so that Chris Jericho couldn't uh, interfere. And then Braun Strowman came out near the end where we saw Roman Reigns nearly about to win. Strowman came out and powerbombed him through the table, and we had Owens finally win. So it was a very, very great sequence of, of events. I loved that match. I loved it after that match happened. Um, you know, I honestly thought that that was probably the best match we were going to get. And then we go to the other matches that happened that same night, and I do have one of those other matches on my list as well, and you probably know what that is, and I'll get to that. Number four on my list goes to DIY versus Authors of Pain, NXT TakeOver Chicago, the ladder match for the NXT Tag Team Championships. Since we're you know distinctly just talking about the match and not really what happened before or after, um, if we were, this probably would have been higher on my list. But it's number four out of all the matches that I had to choose. This was probably one of the greater ladder matches I've seen in, in a long time. Probably one of the best ones. And a lot of these good ones come from NXT, which is not a shocker at all. Um, you know, these guys put on a great performance. I mean, I'm never going to forget some of these spots they did in this match. No matter, you know, if it's two or three years later, I'll still remember. I mean, I remember this spot where you had both... Authors of Pain on both sides of the ladders. You know, there's a ladder extending from the ring to the barricade on both sides. They had both Authors of Pain lying on both opposite ends of the ladder. Did a double spot where Gargano and Champa both jumped off the ladders, or the ladder in the middle, onto the other Authors of Pain on the ladders as, as they were lying down on the ladders, and they crushed both of them, you know. Um, also, the spot where uh, Champa took a... God damn it, that was... Where Champa, you know, suplexed uh, one of the authors of pain into a ladder. Man, the, the ladder shattered. It looked like there was particles flying in the air and smoke. And I, I've never seen a ladder shatter that, you know, like that. It was uh, truly uh, a dangerous, dangerous spot. A dangerous match. The story was tremendous, though, throughout the match. You had, uh, you know, Champa who was trying to win this title. Uh, win these titles. And Gargano was trying to help him out. Gargano pushes Champa out of the way to help his friend and his partner in this match. And... God damn, gets clocked in the face with the with the damn letter. Get just he gets knocked the f out. He's he's finished. He's finished, man. Um, the story was great with the friendship and the partners, and you know, in this in this in this in these odds where the stack, you know, they're it, the odds are stacked against them, and you know, uh, they tried to do as much as they can, and then in the ending where uh, you know uh, they might have lost the match, 
DIY might have lost, but there was one guy who did gain some things uh, from this whole uh, dilemma, and that was Tommaso Ciampa turning on Johnny Gargano. But overall, probably one of the greater ladder matches I've seen all year long. Number three goes to WWE Raw. Finn Balor versus Seth Rollins versus The Miz. Triple threat match. So for a lot of you, you know, you might not remember this match. But since it's on this list, I clearly do remember this match. It was a match on Raw where I think it was a week or two before Extreme Rules, the pay-per-view of this year. So this was literally a month ago, maybe two months ago. Um, which you had uh, a lot of these different competitors from the Fatal 5-Way match, right? The Fatal 5-Way match for the number one contendership for the Universal title, which was going to be contended at Extreme Rules. You had all of these guys be in these different stipulated matches. You had a one-on-one -on -one match with Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins. You had a tag team match. You had a triple threat week to week to week before Extreme Rules hit. So this was another one of those. There really wasn't a major story going into this match. And once I saw this match was announced, I was like, okay, this might be an interesting match. Obviously, from the previous multi-man matches, we've seen triple threats, fatal four-ways. Remember the last time when, uh, you know, there was a fatal four-way elimination match and you had Kevin Owens become champion, Seth Rollins turn face, Triple H returns, all this in one night, right? So I was like, mm, maybe something could come out of this. And what came out of this was it came number three on my uh, on my uh, best matches of 2017, you know. Balor was obviously the highlight in this match. This guy was jumping, flying all over the place. Rollins was a... The Rollins we saw in this match was the Rollins we've been waiting to see for a long time. Like, we we were wondering where this Rollins had gone. You know, he's freaking suplexing people, jumping out of the ring, you know, doing all these crazy high-flying moves that we've seen him do, you know, in the past with the, with the Shield, even when he was WWE champ. And since, because of his knee, where, you know, his knee got, uh, you know, buckled in and stuff, he sort of started to take it safe. But this was a tremendous match, and he had the aspects of, of, of Samoa Joe interfering, he had the aspect of, uh, of Bray Wyatt interfering with Finn Balor and Seth Rollins, and then there was only one man left, and that was the cheap uh, mother effer known as uh, The Miz, who took the win. And uh, you could even see Maurice's reaction, man. Uh, every time, every time... Uh, somebody would kick out, my goodness, you know, it would electrify the crowd, and uh, Maurice was standing in ringside, like, what the hell does my husband have to do to win, right, and so he took, uh, he took the uh, win over Seth Rollins, or was it, it was Finn Balor, I believe, once um, he was about to deliver the coup de gras, and Bray Wyatt interfered and uh, took him down. So, number two, well, last, last two matches, number two uh, on this list I had to rewatch this match, the highlights on YouTube, which is about five minutes long. So the reason why I had to do this is because on the night of, you know, and this is the Royal Rumble pay-per-view, right? So this is another Royal Rumble match from this year. Um, the reason was is, is because my WWE Network stream was buffering a lot, so I couldn't really enjoy this match to the fullest. So I had to rewatch it on that, uh, you know, same week, I believe, and then I had to rewatch it again because it was a few months uh, later that I'm recording this video. But I have no doubt in my mind that this match is right where it needs to be. All right. The WWE Championship was on the line at the Royal Rumble in this match. John Cena versus AJ Styles, number two on the list. Talk about a, a show stealer. I mean... I think the Royal Rumble itself was one of the greater pay-per-views of this year. I don't care what you say, every match delivered. Even the Cruiserweight Championship match delivered. But this match, this match, you know, a lot of people would tell you that you have to watch the match from the beginning to the end to know how great it is. You can watch the highlights from this match, they're just like three minutes long, and you're already going to think this is one of the greater matches of the year. I'm not joking. That's what I did. Why do you think it's on number two? You know what I'm saying? Cena and Styles, I mean, John Cena in that match. They were slick. They were fast. They were moving at perfect pace. Um, nobody was slowing down in that match. Cena's aggression was shocking. Do you did, did you see how many times this guy clotheslined AJ Styles? And Styles did a 360. He knocked the socks off his, this man. Like, I'm not joking. Tremendous, tremendous counters. You know, um... 
Cena going for the AA. Uh, AA just styles counters on the top row, picks him up. Uh, you know, turns him around, power bomb onto the uh, you know onto the ring. Uh, you know, it was all confined into the ring. You know, um, and you know. They ended it off with uh, AJ Styles going for a phenomenal forearm. Cena catches him. AA rolls into another one. AA perfect sequence of finish. Um, I believe uh, I believe uh, Styles hit one. Uh, uh, Styles clash. Cena kicked out of that. Um, but uh, you know, there was also one uh, one part in the match where Cena thought he had it. He looked he looked like he was about to freaking win it, and then Styles kicked out, and he had a shocked face. I mean, you know, it was it it, it outdid their SummerSlam match. No doubt, um, it obviously outdid every other match Cena's done. It's probably one of the better matches of Cena's career, um, and obviously Styles is in this match. I mean, Styles is always a, a tremendous wrestler, and no wonder why he uh, got the best wrestler of the year for 2016, because he truly is. Speaking of the best ever, number one on this list. I'm pretty sure that nobody is going to doubt me here. If you saw this match, you know that I'm sane and I'm speaking from the heart. I am not lying to you. I'm telling you the truth. This was probably one of the best matches I've ever seen in my life. Not just this year, in my life. And I can guarantee you right now that at the end of the year when I make my top 10 list, for the best matches of this year, this is still going to be number one. It, I don't believe anything is going to beat this match right here. It's an NXT TakeOver match, which is obviously not a shocker. All right, It is for the WWE United Kingdom Championship NXT TakeOver Chicago. I just have to tell you the names now. You already know the match. Pete Dunne. Versus Tyler Bate. Um, you have no idea how many times I popped for th- the moves in this match. I couldn't believe some things they were doing. All right. Pete Dunne. I don't know how long this guy's been in the business for. But he works a heel perfectly. Every time Tyler Bate with his finisher or a, a, a significant move or whatever. Or a clothesline or whatever. He nearly flipped him in half and you know looked like he freaking killed him. Uh, Pete Dunne would always go. He would always move out of the ring. You know, he'd always move out of the ring and you know uh, for his safety, so he wouldn't have to get pinned or have to suffer a uh, a pinfall by Tyler Bate. That's a good heel move. All right. Um, he displayed tremendous work in that match. Tyler Bate looked uh, looked great in that match. I mean. Uh, I don't even know some of the names of these moves, but it was absolutely shocking. You had Tyler Bate, who did the airplane spin. Uh, you had a damn standing ovation for that. I mean, since this is this was in Chicago, you can obviously realize that this match was... It, it superseded expectations. I mean, if this match was in a regular arena, I think that if it's an if it's a match worth investing in, if, if you can invest in the match, if, if, if it's intriguing about... Anybody, any crowd can invest in a match. Even the quiet, uh, even the quietest of crowd. But since this was in Chicago, they were already hot, hot from the start. And uh, you know, Jr. calling this. I mean, this is like comparing it to Mayweather and McGregor, where you have Mar and all calling it. You have all these great talent calling it together to make it seem, you know, main event worthy. And you had Pete Dunne, Tyler Bate, and Jr. and Nigel McGuinness. All the pieces worked together, and they put on a classic, and they put on history. And that is what I'm going to say, man. The number one match so far this year was NXT TakeOver, Pete Dunne, Tyler Bate. I'm going to read to you the top five again. Number five, Roman Reigns versus Kevin Owens, the Royal Rumble 2017. Number four, DIY versus Authors of Pain, ladder match, WWE, NXT TakeOver, Chicago. Number three, Seth Rollins versus Finn Balor versus The Miz, Monday Night Raw. Number two, John Cena versus AJ Styles, Royal Rumble 2017. And number one, Pete Dunne versus Tyler Bate, UK Championship at NXT TakeOver Chicago. We have a lot of NXT TakeOver Chicago and a lot of Royal Rumble uh, 
contenders here for the top five. And I truly believe that the Royal Rumble was a great pay-per-view overall, and NXT TakeOver Chicago was a great NXT TakeOver for this year. Let's see what the rest of this year brings to us. And let's see if uh, any of these matches can stay in place uh, when uh, December the 31st comes around this year. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning into this video. If you like this top five list, make sure to comment and say you liked it. If you want more, give me ideas. What 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 other top five do you want to see? What other top five, uh, you know, topics do you want me to talk about in terms of wrestling? State that in the comment section below. Like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell. I will see you in the next video. You guys have been amazing. This is my top five list for the WWE best matches of 2017 so far. And we will continue this at the end of this year. Peace out.